Suppose you wanted to print the integers from 1 through 100. You could just use 100 print statements, but that's very time consuming. So instead, why not just use one print statement with something called a while loop? A while loop is something that basically repeats the code inside until the given condition inside the parentheses is false. So in this case, this while loop, when num1 exceeds 100, then the while loop will stop running. And inside we can execute whatever code we want. Also note that the while loop only checks for the condition each time after I run the code inside. So in this case, num1 is 1, 1 is less than or equal to 100. Then it prints 1, num1 becomes 2, 2 is less than or equal to 100. Then it prints 2 and so on. So then we accomplish our objective within six lines rather than a hundred lines. Now here's another example. Print the even integers from zero to hundred inclusive. So this time we start off with zero, then while num2 is less than or equal to a hundred, which is where we end, I print it. Then we, this time we increase by two and to ensure that num2 is always an even number so that our program runs as we want it to. Here's another more complicated example. Print the sum of the integers from 1 through 100 this time. So we first start out with the same setup because regardless of what we're doing, we still need an integer that goes from 1 through 100. So while num3 is less than or equal to 100, and then inside we add one each time. Now, since we need the sum and we can't just print it, we need to do something outside that makes all the numbers connect in some way. In this case, I'm keeping track of a variable named sum1, and each time inside the loop, I just add num3 to sum1. So then what happens is initially 1 gets added to sum1, then num3 becomes 2, then 2 gets added to sum1, and so on until num3 becomes 100, which gets added to sum1. And we get the result, which is the sum of the integers from 1 through 100 inclusive, which should be 5050. Here are a few exercises for you to do. First one, determine the output of this piece of code. So first, we have a num4, which is set to 2. Then, while it is less than or equal to 9, we print it, so we print 2 then num4 becomes 4, then we print 4. Then 4 is less than or equal to 9, so then we print 4, then num4 becomes 6, and then we print 6. Then afterward, 6 is less than or equal to 9, so then we print 6, then num4 becomes 8. Then afterward, we print 8, then 8 is less than or equal to 9, so then we print 8, then num4 becomes 10. And note that although num4 is no longer less than or equal to 9, the loop doesn't immediately stop because this condition is only checked after each iteration. So first it prints 10, then afterward it stops the while loop because we're done num4 is no longer less than or equal to 9, as shown below. Next exercise. So in this one, first we have u1 is set to 1. Then afterward, 1 is less than 100, so then u1 becomes 2, and then I print 2. Then 2 is less than 100, so u1 becomes 4, and I print 4. Then u1 becomes 8, and I print 8. u1 becomes 16, and I print 16. u1 becomes 32, I print 32. It becomes 64, I print 64. Again, it becomes 128, but then, although it's no longer less than 100, we're not done with this iteration of the while loop, so we still print 128 
then we're finished because then it checks the condition and it's no longer true. So as shown below, it's the output. Next exercise. So first, in this one, we have first U2 is set to zero. Then zero is less than 100, so U2 becomes zero. Then it prints zero. Then afterward, zero is less than 100, so then U2 still becomes zero, and then it prints zero. And then it prints zero again, and again, and again, and so on. And never stopping because the condition never becomes false. Now this is called an infinite loop, which is usually something you don't want to have because then we can't get to the code later on, and who wants a code that runs forever? So yeah, when the condition is never ch false, then you should probably look into your code. Next exercise, u starts out to be 3, then 3 is greater than 1, and 3% 2 is equal to 1, so then u becomes 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 10. Then we skip the else because we executed the if, and then we print 10. Then afterward, 10 is greater than 1. 10% 2 is not equal to 1, so we execute the else. u becomes 5. Then we print 5. Then 5 is greater than 1. So then 5% 2 is equal to 1, so u becomes 3 times 5 plus 1, which is 16. And then we print 16 after u becomes 16. 16 is greater than 1. And so then, since this is not true, we divide u by 2, so u becomes 8. Then we print 8. Then afterward, u becomes 4. We print 4. Then u becomes 2. We print 2. 2 is greater than 1, so then u becomes 1. And 1 is not greater than 1, but we're not done with the, this iteration of the for loop, so we continue. We print 1, then we're done with this iteration of the for loop. We check the condition, realize that it's not true anymore, so this is the output, also shown below. Next exercise. So this one, one thing to note before starting is that the while loop without brackets acts just like if statement without brackets. Basically, just treats it as if the next statement is inside brackets. So for this one, i is initially set to 1. 1 is greater than negative 10, so i becomes negative 1. Negative 1 is greater than negative 10, so i becomes negative 3. Negative 3 is greater than negative 10, so i becomes negative 5. Negative 5 is greater than negative 10, i becomes negative 7. Then negative 9. Then negative 9 is greater than negative 10, so then i becomes negative 11. Then afterward, negative 11 is not greater than negative 10. So then it just prints negative 11 at the end, outside the while loop. Next exercise. So first, i is 1. Then while i is greater than negative 10. So first of all, 1 is greater than negative 10, so it executes what the, what's attached to the while loop. But in this case, you have to look carefully. What is attached to this while loop? Actually, it's not this block of code because we have a semicolon right here. So then, since the semicolon is not in brackets, it's just treated as if it were in brackets and the rest of the stuff were outside the while loop. So then, we're executing basically nothing until i becomes less than or equal to negative 10, and that's never happening. So as you can see right here, there just is no output because we can't do anything. Nothing happens. Because the while loop just keeps on executing, running nothing, and the condition is never going to become false. So another example of an unintended infinite loop. Next exercise. This time we have two variables, but we can just keep track of both of them at the same time. So initially, sum 0 is equal to 0, and num 0 is equal to 5. Then 5 is less than or equal to 12, so num 0 becomes 7. 
and sum zero becomes seven, then we go on. Seven is less than or equal to 12. So num zero becomes nine, sum zero becomes 16. Then nine is less than or equal to 12. So num zero becomes 11, sum zero becomes 27. Then num zero is still less than or equal to 12. So num zero becomes 13 and sum zero becomes 40. Then 13 is no longer less than or equal to 12. So then we exit the while loop and we just print 40 as shown below. Next exercise. So this one is a bit different from the last one in that we first declare the variable inside. Now this has a bunch of problems. So the first one, okay, ignoring the print statement at the end, which we'll talk about in a moment, and assuming that thing is some zero zero instead, we don't get what we want, which is to sum the occurrences of num zero zero. Instead, we just get seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen instead of subbing seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. And the reason of this is because each time the while loop executes int sum zero zero equals zero, so sum zero zero is set to zero every single time, and then I add the number, so it's essentially just printing the number itself. So then yeah. However, there's another problem with declaring variables inside while loops that you have to be careful of, which is that if you declare a variable inside a while loop, then you cannot use it outside the while loop. It won't even compile because if we declare anything inside brackets, it disappears outside the brackets. Sum zero zero exists inside here. That's why we're able to print it over here, but it doesn't exist outside these brackets over here which is why we're not able to print it outside of the while loop. As shown, one error found, we can't do that. However, we are able to instead declare a variable with the same name because sum zero zero doesn't really exist on the outside so we can reuse it now. This is the same thing for if statements. So for example, if five is greater than three, int i equals five, and all of a sudden I'm not allowed to print i or access i or do any of this stuff. Both of these are errors. You can't do that because i was declared in the brackets. You can only use it inside the brackets. So this would work, this would print five. However, we can declare a variable named i here instead, and that is allowed. And we are allowed to do anything there. However, notice that once we declare it here, if we use an if statement, say here, if four is less than five, or even if four is less than three, that's a false statement. And then we just want to do int i equals four. Then that's not allowed because we're reusing the variable i. So to get it clear, this i only lasts until this bracket, then we're gone. This i lasts until that bracket because it was declared inside the main method this direct body so it only expires when the main method expires when this thing expires and that's basically in the entire program for our purposes right now so then we cannot use it even inside these brackets because outside variables go into inside brackets but inside variables don't go outside however we are allowed to do stuff like i equals four because that's just merely assigning a value to a variable as shown.